Hello friends, welcome back to the first video of 2022. I hope everybody had a great New Year's celebration and enjoyed their time and I hope 2022 will be a better year than 2021. So in this video we will be looking at something I really n never thought that I will fly again and that is Boeing 787 it is using the heavy division mod and I was doing a test flight and it worked interestingly well so just decided to record a video because right now with the latest development version it has completely overhauled working title flight plan manager and FMC logic um, and it has a working VNAV and it flies nicely so we'll take a look at it um, we'll start cold and dark program the FMC taxi to the runway take off, climb and then descend and land like our regular schedule or regular tutorials so that you see all the phases of the flight and how this aircraft performs with the heavy division uh, Boeing 78X mod and I'll place the links to the mod uh, at the description field of the video you can download the development or stable I don't know if stable has VNAV working so I'm using the development version just, just FYI anyways we are currently in Russia different place we haven't been here before Kolstova airport and we will be traveling or our destination is Moscow without further ado let's jump into the cockpit and let's start programming the FMC and powering the aircraft alright as you see we are cold and dark nothing is turned on and we'll start with the overhead this is not going to be a comprehensive checklist based startup procedure so this is the quickest way of doing it but if you guys are interested in more detailed ones I'm pretty sure there are a lot of videos on YouTube that explains the systems of this aircraft which is half done uh, with the default version thanks to heavy division uh, without their mod I wouldn't be touching this plane at all anyways first things first we'll turn the battery power to on that will give us power we have ground power available so we'll turn the throw forward and aft external power and immediately start aligning our irs's we'll turn the passenger signs to on and what we will do is we will turn the nav lights on to state that we have power to the aircraft everything else stays like this this over here the outer one controls the glare shield like so it's too bright if you ask me so that is good enough for me and then this is the panel lights which we will also turn on overhead panel this is the integral lighting and the master brightness for all the lights I don't know what that button does when you click it so if you know let me know in the comments so this is the overhead done passenger signs yes they are done we will not worry about anything else as of now maybe later on let's check downstairs everything looks okay and one thing I'd like to increase is the uh, panel lights down below with this knob over here alright from here we'll jump onto the FMC and we'll start programming as you see this has a new look uh, this is completely overhauled by the heavy division team this is not the default one as far as I remember so position initialization our reference airport right now is um, uniform Sierra 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 I think we are parked at gate 50 if I'm not mistaken and we'll take this GPS position and plug it in here for the IRS to align 
our current heading we can set but we don't have to we will uh, come back to this you can do this to increase the accuracy of the GPS but this should be good enough to align next up we'll go and plug in our route and as always I'm gonna use the SimBrief integration to set that up you need to go to this heavy mod and then IRS menu you can change the uh, align time to real fast or instant and configuration here where you enter your SimBrief ID and whether you wanna sync the flight plan uh, from the world map menu in Microsoft Flight Simulator and you can also change your units uh, for this aircraft in here I'm using metric units we are in Russia so Europe technically LNAV debug this is for their own um, this is for their own use if you wanna send a debug report you use this but we are not going to worry about this right now alright we will request a route from SimBrief by pressing that root, root request and it will give you uh, two options load flight plan, flight plan from PFPX this is loading a flight plan from a certain format but I use this one so I haven't messed with this I don't know how it works you can just research on your own time you'll just simply click and load it from SimBrief it will enter all the away points and if there are any airways those two and that will be our flight plan um, integration copied from SimBrief and what we need to do is that flight number is wrong actually it's not uh, taking it from SimBrief by the way this is what's left in the flight plan manager but our flight plan flight uh, number is Alpha Fox Trot Lima 1415 which is a real world flight down by Aeroflot but not with a Boeing 787 Boeing 737 alright from here we have to activate the route and execute that is done so we need to check our weights and balances and see how much fuel we will need for this flight to do that basically same menu Microsoft's weights and balances menu and according to SimBrief we will need 17.4 tons of fuel which we have 17.4 I think that's also brought with the flight plan manager which is great so we have the right fuel and we can go and take a look at our performance initialization page everything is filled, us, filled out for us uh, as you see and we'll go to the trust limiter we will derate 10% outside and you can select the difference temperature to derate more if you want to but we will not so we will just plug in the outside air temperature that's uh, the current temperature which we see right now and we'll go to takeoff page and <coughs> set our takeoff parameters we'll take with flaps 10 we'll take off with flaps 10 and from here we just press these buttons to populate the v-speeds FMC preflight complete message that means we are done with this part departure and arrival let's just plug in our departure and arrival our departure is from runway 08 and if you take a look at the map I'm not sure if I'm confusing myself but looks like in in Microsoft Flight Simulator these are lo looking opposite I'm not sure if this is really 8 left and that's really 26 right not sure um, so therefore we will just stick to this and see how it populates in our screens runway 08 right and actually 08 right is not that one it is this one down here we have to cross 08 uh, 6 08 left to go to the right so our SID standard instrument departure is Luna 6 Juliet which we can go to the next page and that's right there we don't have any transition we will execute this 
we'll go to the departure arrival menu and for our arrival we will select an ILS 224 left it takes some time and our star in the arrival route is Dink 3 Foxtrot this guy here and our transition is Kesbu which is the only transition that we see we will execute this too and that allows our route planning down except the discontinuities that we need to clean up so to do that we go to the legs page scroll to see if there are any discontinuities which there is one here we'll press the select the next one next one with the line select key and paste over the discontinuity and execute that to get rid of that next 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 there is another one we will do the same and execute this and we will check our flight plan routing when the IRS aligns so that's our FMC programming down nothing else is working nav page is working and we don't see an ILS frequency here which is interesting I have to look it up from the chart and see if it's a uh, um, nav data issue or a real issue so I'm just quickly checking the chart to see the frequency and that frequency is 110.5 <laughs> let's try to plug this in and I'm not sure if I have to put the for forward slash no but now it's taking the frequency which means it's missing in the Navigraph database now we have all the frequencies and that is our FMC programming done alright IRS still has time to align and it gives you how much you have left to align so we have roughly two minutes which we can use to program the MCP or main control panel so our cruising altitude is going to be 38,000 feet and we don't have any restrictions so we'll directly go to 38,000 feet I'm using my controller to change the altitude oops that's too much that's 38,000 that is set we'll set the indicated airspeed to 250 just to be on the safe side but we now takes good care of it with the auto throttle so we'll set it like that and I hear another aircraft parking right now and I'm gonna check the departure heading which is 079er so I will put the heading bug to 079er as a secondary measure there we go now our MCP is done we can turn the flight director on and LNAV we now on all right so that is the MCP done and we have one minute before the IRS aligns in the meantime as you see we have the jetway connected and there is a big aircraft parking next to us looks like an Airbus A330 ish or 350 that's a big one all right what we will do at this point is we will get rid of the jetway because we are about to oops keep hitting the wrong button we are about to be on our way so let's pull the ambitious ambitious pilots toolbar pushback and we'll get rid of the jetway and it should be leaving yes it is okay because we are almost done let's go ahead and start the APU and aside from that I don't think we have anything else we need to do at the overhead panel seven seconds and then we will see IRS aligning and then we will check our flight plan routing we'll switch the barometric pressure to hectopascals and minimums to barometric minimums this button over here transfer the ECAS to here so that you can see it a little bit bigger that adjusts the range 
and I'll stick to a 10 mile range to check the flight plan routing. Let's get rid of the yoke and let's go to the legs page and if you get closer you'll see um, we'll switch to the plan mode and now we have the option to step through the waypoints and as you see we are taking off from 08 right and taking a three 180 degree turn in this case the other end of the runway which is 26 left is more favorable but Simbrief is giving us 08 rate right for some reason so let's step through this so that's one waypoint and it will cycle through all the waypoints and show us if there are any problems on our routing looks like it is looking okay so far so good keep going keep going and there is a mess right there after Panzo we are going and let me just increase the range and look at that that is the runway and we are just taking all this trouble to come back to the runway which we don't have to so after Panzo we can go direct to the next waypoint and I'm having a hard time reading that oops what is it after Panzo Soret and I'm pretty sure we are coming back to that so let's keep going and I'm pretty sure we are coming back to Soret or closer that is an interesting arrival I think the direct arrival in this case would be a better option and that's why we are checking our routing and let's see so Kuzun we can just take this and go all the way to the other page and after what was it Panzo Soret let's try here I don't want to get rid of Soret so because I cannot see we'll just do this and execute that and that is a better flight plan routing as you see here all right that looks much more better we have APU and one thing I noticed is if I go to the systems page you see a lot of information here fuel stats electrical I think this is a static page because APU is running but it is always green when it's not running as well you will see it when we start the engines and right engine generators are not showing the correct information and we don't have left engines running but it looks like it's showing that the left engine generator is on which is not true so that's probably a work in progress these might be some static pages so be aware of that but we are not interested in that we are just interested in how this aircraft performs uh, when climbing and when descending and landing alright so that's the routing checked and we are good to go so what we can do at this point is we have our APU gens available we'll turn the APU generators to on and let me check outside to make sure yep we have the ground power still connected so we can tell the ground crew to remove the power and that will take care of that and we are ready to start the engines and push back pretty much we are ready to be on our way we will push the tail to the right and then take the taxiway which you should be able to see here if I bring the range closer there we go just a little bit better this is the taxiway we'll take this taxiway all the way to the end and that's runway 08 right we'll take off towards this side turn around and come back that is the plan we'll keep this at range 10 miles for now we might change this later on let's start with calling the tug and 
this is a little bit more interactive. Uh, I, I like this pushback uh, software or add-on, which has been uh, great so far. Cockpit to ground. This is ground. Stand by. So when he says stand by, he is driving up with the pushback tug, as you see. We need to close the get rid of the baggage. Hopefully he will go away. Catering truck is going away, but the baggage is still there. So, I don't know. This might be a small bug okay, that sir, we are seeing. That's funny, all doors are not closed. He is still loading the baggage. So he should go away now. So he is lifting without the... Okay, just wait. I want to get rid of this baggage uh, truck. Hopefully he will leave. And this might be due to... This... Setting. Because I know it has some issues. Or every time I click, I think I'm just calling it back. Let's close the cargo door. And let's pretend like he is not there. Alright, let's go back to the cockpit. Sorry about that little bug. So now, we are ready to start our pushback. So we will say, reverse. Cockpit to ground. Start and push. Parking brake set. Okay. In the meantime, we'll turn we our beacon lights brake. on and we'll turn our fuel pumps on. And now he is gonna start pushing as soon as we release the parking, parking brake. Are released. Commencing push back. You can so. start the engines in sequence. All right, you we will start. start sequence. We will start with the right engine first. That is the starter right there. Right engine is now spooling and we are waiting to see 17 percent N2 and we have to look up to see when we are going to turn there are a lot of aircraft here interesting this is live traffic by the way guys I'm not using the AIG and that throttle lever is in the wrong position alright we'll flip the starter switch which will then start the engine and we will push the tail to the right and hopefully we are pushing it correctly uh, looks like we are except couple ground aircraft uh, um, ground vehicles being around us as always in Microsoft Flight Simulator but that's okay we will just look through the window and wait for the engine to start all right not super ideal not super accurate i'm terrible at pushing back to be honest but we will hold, he hold here and stop the pushback okay, push back completed. Please set your parking brake. before we set the parking brake we will start the second engine by or the left engine by switching the starter switch and we'll set the parking brake parking brake set parking brake set lowering aircraft is gonna lower the nose Ground. and you may disconnect. Okay, we'll flip sir, the switch to add fuel. Pin has been removed. See you at the side. Have a good we flight. are done with the pushback side of things. Waiting for the visual. Thank you and goodbye. Yeah, I think I like this pushback add-on, uh, even though it is sometimes buggy. It still is a good addition to Microsoft Flight Simulator. We are waiting for the left engine to start and then we will turn off the APU. In the meantime, we can turn our taxi lights to on. Oh, not that one. Alright, taxi lights turned on. Nothing else on the overhead right now, so we are good. And sec left engine is stable now. 
which means we can go ahead and turn off the APU, turn off the APU generators. Alright, we are ready to taxi to the runway, but before doing so, let's bring the yoke back and do a quick flight controls check. Full left, center, full right, center, full forward, center, full back, center, right rudder, center, left rudder, center. All controls are working, I'd like to get some more lighting here, uh, yeah, let's just leave it for now, and we are ready to taxi. So let's disengage or, um, yeah, disengage the parking brake, increase the throttle 30%, 30% ish, and one is a good taxi. Uh, thrust setting for this aircraft and we will join this taxiway right in front of us as you see the aircraft is very slowly accelerating maybe we can just speed it up a little bit and come back on the throttle yep and we will take this taxiway I need to get back on the taxiway first to see the yellow lines and I can just look a little bit closer like this if I want to this is a nice view that helps me to see the nose of the aircraft a little bit better but I'm also good with this one alright we are taking this taxiway turning slowly so she is heavy be mindful and over the turns you need to increase the throttle otherwise she is not gonna move there is another aircraft taxiing about to vacate the runway and I like when I see airports live it makes me smile so yeah and this is a, a good experience right now I think I picked a nice airport to be at for this tutorial uh, not a too long uh, taxi route we will take this what is that red thing there was like a um, nav light or recognition light moving by itself without an aircraft interesting all right we are on the taxiway and we will travel all the way to the end and then enter the runway from there i think i'm gonna keep this trust setting uh we are not rushing so we can just be a passenger for a little bit take a look at the airport and see around so on and so forth and come back to the cockpit very nice so so far so good everything looks okay I didn't see any uh, problems except one though the live weather stopped working after New Year's I don't know why another millennium bug maybe but it was creating some problems so this is a preset that I am using because live weather is causing a memory leak after an hour into the flight you start to experience huge stutters and the sim becomes unplayable so I was reading through the Microsoft Flight Simulator forums and this is what I found out that Asobo team is aware and they are looking for a solution for now but if you are experiencing stutters with live weather roughly about 40-45 minutes into the flight that might be your re the reason causing these stutters whenever I stopped using live weather it turned back to normal and you have to do it in the world map menu changing live weather while you are at the airport is not having any effect so you have to select a preset before loading the flight or loading into the airport so let me know if you are experiencing the same thing in the comments uh, this was something I didn't experience until January 1st and then all of a sudden it started happening alright we are coming to the turn 20 ground speed 20 miles is a little bit fast for this aircraft so we should slow down to 10 15 somewhere between to make the turn easily without um, 
losing our routing or um, getting off course on the taxiway and while turning as I said keep the throttles up it helps with the turns because she is not the fastest turner alright nice and easy not too shabby okay we will maintain this and then We'll take a look at the overhead, we'll turn the strobes on, we'll turn the landing lights to on. We are about to enter an active runway, which we are now doing. And we will just line up first, do a final check. And I know what I forget, which I will remind you guys as well. I should have done this after pushback while waiting for the engine to stabilize, but well good thing I remember that before we take off alright this looks like centered to me which is nice let's stop here idle the throttles and what I forget is to set our flaps so we'll set flaps to 10 which should be 10 now and you can see that indicated here flaps 10 if I get closer you'll see it a little bit better flaps 10 set which is good and then the stab trim is at the lower end of the uh, yep that is good too stab trim is now adjusted and we are ready to roll so to do that we'll press that button for toga which is displayed here since we turned on the LNAV and VNAV and we will increase the throttle to up to 40% let the engine stabilize release the brakes and from here we'll go toga power and off we go we are hearing those big engines pulling and generating trust to accelerate and take us off the runway V1 is coming up release the forward pressure V1 and then we rotate we will pull back gently and follow the flight director alright nice and easy positive rate gear is now coming up and we are gaining speed so we can start pulling the flaps in flaps 5 flaps 1 so now we need to go this direction a little bit I'm hand flying at the moment other trust will take care of everything for now and what we can do is we'll do a three we'll do a 180 turn and why are we slowing down because I'm not following the flight director I need to trim the aircraft nose down and gain some speed alright now we are gaining some speed and this kind of fluctuations happen but it's not a huge deal this aircraft flies nicely than ever before so I am happy we are climbing everything is fine and we are about to make that turn should we do a left turn or right turn I'm not sure but I am uh, tempted to do a right turn so I'll just open to the left a little bit like so to make it easier for us to turn passing almost 5000 now and I think it is time for us to start our turn towards our uh, flight plan route okay let's not bank too much and scare the passengers we will turn like this and we'll wait for the aircraft to slowly turn and watch the speed in the meantime yep speed looks good we are still at flaps one and we are slowly gaining some speed because the nose is taking a dive let's fix 
correct the bank angle a little bit. I think this is too much banking for a passenger airliner, but we are gaining too much speed, so we can bring the flaps in, and the aircraft will maintain 250 knots until we pass 10,000, or we'll try to maintain 250 knots, as you see indicated over here. That's a very wide turn, guys, by the way. That's a very wide turn. I would have preferred the other end of the runway to make this much more easier for an airliner this size to get back on its flight plan route. So that might be a sim brief bug or whatever, but that's that's what I'm thinking. Anyway, I think we made the turn. No problem. Still hand flying. And I will keep turning just a little bit more to get closer to the flight plan route as much as I can and we are nearing 10,000 and what I will do is I will probably level the wings here keep going towards our flight plan route and what I'll do is I'll activate the autopilot now the autopilot will take us to where we need to go hopefully and it is going to maintain 250 until 10,000 and when we pass 10,000 it will increase the speed to 310 knots you will see here in a second as you see now it is time for us to turn off our landing lights and taxi lights which I did using the buttons on my controller all right very nice so far so good except the live weather which is not the fault of this aircraft and has nothing to do with it but I think this aircraft came a long way since I last flew it I would never ex have expected this aircraft to you know follow uh, VNAV and LNAV this, this accurately uh, before and one thing I forgot is to turn the anti-ice systems auto prior to takeoff and our strobe light is also ah strobe is on okay yep I just checked the lights I still mix up which button was which so as you see very nice so far so good we are on our flight plan routing, aircraft is making little corrections and you know it's it's on its way. And you can't beat the sweeps of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Alright guys, I think I'm gonna cut the video here and I might bring you guys back for a little bit at cruise level and then talk about pro planning the descent and I will bring you guys back after that when we are ready to descend see you in a little bit welcome back friends we have a couple thousand feet left to our cruise level and everything worked like a charm I couldn't be happier so let's jump into the cockpit as you see we are at 33,000 feet and we have 6,000 feet to go there is the altitude banana showing us where we should expect to see uh, reaching our cruise level and that is about it one thing I forget prior to takeoff is to turn the auto brakes to RTO rejected takeoff I am a little bit rusty when it comes to Boeing aircraft and that's the reason I'm still trying to remember everything and sorry about that but just remember that too prior to takeoff okay uh, auto brakes to RTO all right so we will reach cruise eventually and for descent planning there is not really too much to do we go to the progress page that shows us our top of descent and when we should expect to reach top of descent that information is here and top of descent is also calculated and shown on the ND uh, which is great so this aircraft now has top of descent although I don't see a calculation here this might be due to that change we made in the flight planning or maybe it's waiting for us to reach to the cruise level I'm not sure the other thing is the 
um, performance and approach planning so init ref and approach and it is really simple all you need to do is select the flaps and the speed that's calculated for you for your landing and we will land with flaps 30 and that's our speed you copy it to the scratch pad and paste it over here and you are done with your uh, approach planning as you see now it is displaying the top of descent when we entered that information it now calculated that for us we have 565 miles this is a long flight I'm not gonna keep you guys here but this has already been a 40 minute video therefore I think we will do the descent and landing in the episode 2 and we will cut it here I think this is enough information for us to see what we did or what I did uh, off screen is switch to max, spe max speeds uh, when we are passing 29,000 feet and the VNAV did the rest for us very nicely so it still banks left and right to correct its course but uh, all in all I couldn't be happier to see this aircraft performing a little bit better than before or much more better than before and uh, becoming something really enjoyable to fly as opposed to the default 787 which was a disaster and a disappointment for me anyways thank you very much for being here today and I will see you in the episode 2 of this 787 uh, heavy division mod tutorial I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please consider giving a thumbs up and if you are not a channel a subscriber support stumbled upon this video consider subscribing and turning on the notifications for second episode to get notified when it's out again guys thanks for being here thanks for supporting the channel and I will see you in the next episode